Hey everyone, this is Johnny again, and this is actually part two of my travel packing video. In the last video, I talked about what carry-on luggage I travel with and the benefits of traveling carry-on only. This video, I'm gonna show you what's inside my bag, what I pack, and what I travel with for you know year-long travel. I'm literally out of the country 11 months of the year, so let's take a look what's inside the bag. So this is the one bag I travel with. I really, really love having just one bag on my back and not having like a rolling luggage or something on top that you're trying to balance and also not having a backpack in the back and also a backpack in the front that always is uncomfortable and makes you look like a hippie backpacker. Uh, I just like having the convenience of having one bag. But as you saw in the last video, what's cool is I actually have my day pack inside this pack um, and this allows me to use this as my, my daily comp my computer bag if I want to go on a hike or something uh, and it makes it really easy. I'm going to show you this in a second with all my tech and my laptop in here but first let's take a look what's inside the actual main bag itself. Inside the side pockets I try not to film with, with too much junk, I try to have something a uh, place for everything. Uh, first I have a little um, toilet shoes pack, this I got for free when I flew business class on one of the flights, but you can really just use anything. Uh, one thing I carry with me is a beard trimmer. This is a battery powered and it uses double A batteries. The batteries usually last about a month or so. Uh, and what I really like about it is because I'm always changing countries with different voltages, if I had a plug in one, it would probably end up burning out <laughs> like in different places plugging it in. So that's why I like having a beard trimmer. Uh, and then I always carry tube of Neil Sporn with me. This sounds ridiculous, but for some weird reason, this is the only brand of like cut cream that actually heals cuts. Uh, all the antibacterial stuff that you buy everywhere else, it like disinfects it, but it doesn't heal. So that's why I travel with it. Everything else I can get wherever uh, I am. Toothpaste, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss. For some reason it's hard to find in a lot of places. <laughs> so travel with floss, just normal basic stuff. Now, I really, really am a huge fan of packing cubes. So I actually originally bought a set that had big ones and small ones, but as you can see, these are folded in half because they are too big. Um, I try to have less stuff. So this size is perfect. I think it's the small size, but what I'll do is I'll link it below in the description with everything that I've talked about today, uh, everything that I've bought so you can see for yourself. But let's, let's actually take a look first through this packing cube. I recommend having five of these packing cubes and you know maybe a toiletry like a like a laundry bag so that way what what you do is you end up not having too much stuff uh, it really forces you to have these containers of, of stuff so for example this is outerwear jackets and outerwear I'll have another one for uh, tops like shirts another one for bottoms like shorts and uh, pants Another one for underwear and uh, socks and accessories like shoes and stuff like that. So let's go over this one first, outerwear. I made a video on the Ball Box best travel jacket in the world. Uh, I bought on Kickstarter and first it took over a year to arrive and then as soon as I got it, I was so disappointed with it. It was just uncomfortable, it was way too hot to wear and I realized after that First, I wasted so much money buying that jacket. And then second, there is no such thing as the perfect travel jacket. I really tried hard to find the perfect travel jacket and you could find ones with more features that are either more you know, waterproof, more, you know, more and more convertible. But there is no such thing. The best travel jacket is one that you can layer. <laughs> and this is what I've, I've discovered. So these three, <clears throat> jackets are combined into the perfect travel jacket and because what that allows you to do is it allows you to go from temperatures of being a little bit chilly uh, at night in Chiang Mai Thailand <laughs> during the winter when it drops down to 20 Celsius which is I think whatever that says up here and um, also it allows me to go to places like Ukraine where 
At night, it was five degrees Celsius, which I believe was in its 40s, but I'll, I'll put it right here. But it's been uh, really cold here in Ukraine in the end of April. So this is winter in Ukraine and also, so, you know, slightly cold days in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And you, by having this setup, you're able to be comfortable in all situations. So I've brought this to both extremes of places where, you know, you just want something to wear on the on a long bus ride or train ride or on the plane when it gets a bit chilly, but also when it's literally cold outside and, you know, you really need something before you get hypothermia. So uh, to start, I like having a basic either lightweight sweater or you can do like a lightweight hoodie or something for the base layer. Uh, if you can get like a merino wool one, that'd be really nice. But this is actually just a super cheap sweater that I picked up in Spain because I needed one and I had lost, somehow I had lost my other sweater. But basically, the reason why I like it is you can tie this around your waist. So when, you're, when you go out during the day and it's not hot yet, but you don't want to carry something, you don't want to carry a bag, I can just tie this around my waist and uh, I'm all set. And I don't have to, you know, for, you know, be cold at night, even though it... Um, it's not necessarily freezing outside. This by itself can normally be fine uh, in temperatures down to about 19 or 20 Celsius, which is whatever that is. Uh, but then on colder days, I'm a big fan of these lightweight puff jackets. So I'm sure you've seen these everywhere. You might even know people that have it. If you live in anywhere in Europe, you probably already own one. But I really like the lightweight ones. The heavy puff jackets are you know, hard to carry around. They're too bulky. You can't wear it most of the time unless it's like dead in winter. And even then, because you're going in and out of places that are heated uh, or, you know, or cold, it ends up being really uncomfortable to have a really hot, heavy jacket. So get the lightest weight you can. I'll, I, there's a, <clears throat> I'll link a couple below here. And I haven't tried the Amazon Basics one, but something even like that or cheap Uniqlo one, like they're good enough. And here's a fun fact. I did a lot of research. The synthetic down jackets, so the, not the feathers, but like just, you know, made out of whatever the synthetic material is, the man-made material, they were actually better than the down ones. The down ones keep you warmer uh, slightly. So they're slightly lighter and slightly warmer, but you don't need it to be that warm anyways because you're layering and the synthetic ones will keep you warm even if it gets wet. So if you have the natural down jackets and it starts to rain, you'll freeze because it, it doesn't retain heat. Uh, the, the feathers collapse. They're also really hard to wash. So if you need to ever clean your down jacket, you need to either bring it somewhere professionally or you have to ex buy these expensive, you know, uh, like special detergents just for, for the down. So it's really hard to, to maintain, it's expensive to buy, and there's no reason to buy it. So buy the synthetic ones, it's cheaper, it's warm enough, and they're easier to clean. So um, this is one I picked up in Spain somewhere as well, when I knew I was coming to Ukraine, uh, but lighter the better. This is probably the, as a little bit too big. I actually want one I can pack down into like its own pocket. I'll have some links to ones below, but you can take a look at those. Uh, and then, last but not least, to layer the third layer would be a raincoat. Now, the reason why these are so beneficial is first, uh, no matter how cold it gets, if you put on this layer underneath the base layer, so you have, you know, t shirt, base layer, you put on the lightweight puff jacket, and then you put on this raincoat, which first off is also windbreaker, so it keeps out the wind, keeps out the rain, and it retains heat. This allows you to, to be in temperatures of down to down to freezing, down to zero, which is I think 30 something Fahrenheit, but basically down to freezing. And if you really, you know, if you're really somewhere that cold, you could pick up like hats and scarves and other things to, to make you more warm. But in general, uh, this will get you through anything. I mean, I'm pretty confident I can, I can trek in uh, Nepal with just these three things. I've been there with like a bigger puff jacket and sometimes it gets too hot and sometimes you're you're cold and there's nothing you can do about it. So I really like having the layers. This one is through Malmont. 
I bought it because I was doing a lot of kind of extreme, you know, outdoor stuff, um, being on like dive boats all the time, or sometimes it pours rain. What is going on, Ireland? What is going on, Wickelaway? Uh, I brought this to Nepal uh, when I was trekking in the Himalayas, and it's a it's the best raincoat to keep rain out, but it's also really hot, so you can't wear this if it's more than like 18 degrees outside, uh, like whatever, whatever that is, 70 degrees or something. So that's the problem with um, having really, really good raincoats. But at the same time, I normally just don't wear this very often, even though it would be nice to wear as a, you know, a windbreaker when it's chilly outside, but it's not, it's not cold. The problem is it is very, very difficult, if not impossible for a jacket to be actually rain proof like waterproof and to be breathable it's they they don't go together uh any really lightweight breathable jacket is probably water resistant which is okay for like a light shower but the nice thing about those puff jackets is most of these are water resistant anyway so you actually don't need those um if you want if it actually rains then you'll need a rain jacket so i'll link some that i like below uh and as well as this one. But with these three jackets combined, you are set for any possible scenario. I don't wear this that, that often, but you know when I'm like trekking in Ireland uh, or in Nepal or here in Ukraine, I was going to the gym this morning and it was, it was raining outside, I would wear it and I'm really happy I had it. Sure, you can get by with having uh, an umbrella, but then you might, this also acts as a layer for when it's really, really cold out. So uh, these three, three, things, three things combined, perfect jacket. And remember, it fits in this small cube. So, and they're all lightweight, so really, really easy to travel with. All right, so next let's talk about tops. So shirts, uh, you know, dress shirts, polo shirts, anything that you wear on the top of your body. Uh, as you can see, I'm a big fan of these uh, synthetic, kind of breathable workout shirts. Uh, I like the North Face ones the best. I think I bought like nine or ten of them, and somehow I either gave them away or lost all of them. I have I, li I have literally have no more left. So when I get back to the U.S., I'm gonna buy some more. They're about twenty bucks each, but they're really really comfortable. They're breathable. They wick away water. They dry really fast. Uh, this one is I think from Target or something, uh, which are they're good as well. Uh, I just like the North Face ones because they're very consistent. While the ones you buy from other places, some of them don't breathe very well, so they get a bit hot, or they don't wear very well. But uh, whatever ones you get, I'm a big fan of these. And I know a lot of minimalistic carry-on, you know, pack, uh, luggage-only videos. They say, "Oh yeah, just have two T-shirts." That's fine if you're if you're traveling for like a week and you're going to like a conference and going back home. But if you're traveling full time, eleven months of the year, like I am. You know, technically I'm traveling 12 months a year because when I go home, I don't really have any, you know, any stuff there anyways. Uh, you need more than two shirts. And t-shirts aren't that heavy. You know, they don't weigh that much. And it's one, they're cheap enough where you can kind of leave them behind if you really need. So I like to travel with five of these shirts. I wear them every day for, you know, when I'm just hanging out at the house, when I'm going out, I wear it to the gym. Sometimes I even wear it when I go out at night. So I really just wear them all the time. So there's no reason for me to have less than five. Sometimes I end up getting too many. I have to leave some behind. But, you know, I picked up some from like Decathlon. Um, I think this one is also from, from Target. But I, and then this was a Reebok one. But basically, I really like these shirts. I keep a lot of these uh, with me all the time. And then I like to have my favorite polo shirt has been this one that's more of like an actual golf shirt that actually is um, a material where it's stretchy. It's it's pretty much the same material as this, but a little bit thicker. And I've tried traveling with normal polo shirts, like the cotton polo shirts. And the problem is once you wash them, the first off they shrink, uh, second, the collars get all messed up, they wrinkle, they just are not that travel friendly. So even though I really wanted to have more collared shirts just to be a bit more classy while I travel and not just be like a athletic, uh, you know, backpacker kind of guy, it's it's hard to do. So 
if you can find these kind of like stretchy uh, material shirts, you know, Under Armour makes them, um, um, this one got Decathlon. There's a, there's a ton of uh, companies out there. Now, the one shirt that I travel with that I don't really need uh, is this kind of, this uh, nicer short sleeve dress shirt. I actually got this custom made in Thailand right before the Nomad Summit because I needed a nice shirt because I'll be I was presenting at the conference and because they have tailors there they'll actually custom tailor shirts to your size. I got this for thirty bucks and I've you know I've kept it because it's a really nice shirt. It's it's actually really lightweight. It's small and it's like the nice going out shirt that I wear. And what's really nice about this color uh, and then this material, it's I think it's I don't actually know what it is, but it's it just doesn't wrinkle. And because of this pattern and color, even if it does wrinkle a bit, you don't really notice it. I also had one in white that I basically got rid of because it would just wrinkle and it was hard to keep you know to keep perfectly white and like and presentable. So don't travel with white clothes. Try to travel with darker clothes. Uh, especially like jackets and things like that, just so it doesn't look like you're wearing the same thing all the time. And they hide stains well, they hide wrinkles well, they just are better in mo more situations. But at the same time, feel free to change it up with like the t-shirts and the accessories and stuff because you don't want to be one of those backpackers that just has everything in black or gray because that's also kind of boring, right? And I know there's, you know, some of them as tra you know, uh, travelers do that because they only have two shirts, so they don't want people noticing they only have two shirts. So you can't have a, a bright red and a bright green one. But for me, that's why I like having a couple extra shirts. And a big secret is, if I ever need to leave something behind, these are these are the things I, I, I happily leave behind without issue. Because uh, sometimes like if I'm traveling somewhere and I have, I picked up something else, I need to get leave something else behind, or I'm overweight or it just doesn't fit in my bag anymore. I'm a big fan of just donating clothes to like local charity shops uh, or just leaving it, you know, somewhere. So a big kind of travel hack is if I'm somewhere for more than two months, I'll go out and buy a couple more shirts just to wear it during those months because it's convenient not, not have to do laundry all the time. It's nice to kind of change things up. Uh, but then I just leave it behind. So up next is we have the bottoms. So uh, right now I'm actually wearing these travel pants. Um, I'll try to link them below. I actually don't remember where I got these from, but what I really like about them is they don't wrinkle, they're lightweight, they're super comfortable, but they look kind of dressy, but you can still wear them kind of casually. But, and they have nice deep pockets for your wallet. But what I really like is there's a zipper on the side, so you can keep valuables in here too. And it's actually big enough, if I wanted to, I could put my wallet and my phone in here. Uh, and zip it up if I'm going through like a super shady area <laughs> like if I'm going through Barcelona or if I'm going through like if I was traveling through like South America or somewhere I can zip it up and be make sure nobody is able to get through into those pants but aside from these uh, I travel with a couple pairs of shorts so I really really like these hybrid uh, shorts. This one's made by Quicksilver. It's called the Amphibian. And the reason why I like these is they look like normal uh, normal sh shorts that you can wear with a dress shirt, like um, a dress shirt or the polo shirt or t-shirt. And it looks like, you know, nice normal pants. But they're made out of material where first they don't really wrinkle. Uh, they dry super quickly. And you can actually swim in these. They're, they're made like board shorts to uh, surfing and I have literally went surfing in these very shorts. I have two pairs of these. I have this this one and a gray one. Um, so for if you look inside, they don't have too much of that mesh, so it doesn't it's not uncomfortable. Just on the pockets, so they are the most comfortable shorts I've ever worn in my life. And I have worked out on these. I've swam in these. I've went out to nice dinners in these. So you can do pretty much everything in these shorts. Uh, this one is also by Quicksilver, but Billabong makes them, um, any of the kind of the surf companies make them. They have zipper pockets, so you can keep things safely as well. Uh, they're quick dry, they're comfortable. But what I did when I was in Sri Lanka is I would wear these during the day, and, and then they would get dirty, but instead of doing laundry, 
which was kind of a, a pain because I had to give it to someone to do laundry, I would just wear them surfing. And having them be in the salt water, rubbing against the board for an hour, I would go back and just rinse them um, in fresh water, hang them to dry, and they were perfectly clean. So really, really nice travel hack. I really like these. Combined with these, these travel pants, life becomes so much easier. And only because I'm at beach areas a lot, I do a lot of uh, like scuba diving, I love snorkeling, I love swimming in the ocean, I love swimming in general, and I spent three weeks in Sri Lanka surfing. I also travel with actual board shorts, just to, just you know for actual beach swimming. But to be honest, if you don't spend that much time in the water or on the beach, if you just go once in a while, you don't need this. You can just have these. And I mean, I guess technically you can get away with, with one pair, but I really like wearing shorts. I like uh, summer. I basically live in Thailand during the winters where it's hot, and then Europe in the summers when it's hot, so I'm almost always wearing shorts. Uh, so that's why I, I carry two pairs of shorts. And the only other pair is actually, I guess is also optional, is workout shorts. So these are the Adidas um, normal, you know, normal workout shorts. The reason why I prefer to wear these and not my, uh, uh, these all the time is, one is this has elastic waistband, so it's a bit more comfortable. I don't have to wear a belt with it, especially when I lose or gain weight and like it doesn't fit perfectly anymore. And the second, I do a lot of heavy squats and I've actually ripped both of these kind of the crotch area. The nice thing is they're easy to repair. Uh, I, I literally spent $2 at a sewing uh, place, both in Thailand and then again here, because I've ripped them twice now. Uh, and they just repair them so they look perfectly fine. But because I do a lot of squats, I need these. But if you're just like a normal person that works out once in a while, that does like normal weights and you're not doing like heavy back squats, you can literally bypass both of these. Just travel with these two hybrid shorts and a pair or two of these travel pants, depending on how often you like to wear pants. And the only other thing I have in here that's also kind of optional, and I actually don't use very often, is this travel towel. Uh, microfiber is a really, really good material that drives super quickly. Uh, it's super small, so even though it's really small and doesn't weigh very much, it's actually a full-size bath towel. So it just covers me entirely. Uh, I can actually wrap it around my waist. And the reason why you get black is because black dries the fastest in the sun. So if you're staying, let's say at a hostel for a day, you're at a surf camp, you're on the beach, and you want it to dry in the sun really quickly because you're leaving you know, in a few hours and the next day, next morning, the black has the best chance of drying uh, quickest. I mostly stay in places where they provide towels, uh, either Airbnbs or you know, hotels. Uh, even a lot of hostels now provide uh, towels or I rent it like as long as it's not more than three euros like four dollars for a towel I'll just rent it because I can't be bothered to do my do laundry it's nice to have a nice clean fresh towel um, so this I don't really need but it's nice to have just in case and then I bring it to the beach and things like that as well all right up next we have my laundry bag so I reuse the Nomad Cruise one I got but it doesn't really matter what you have but I really like having these like cloth laundry bags. A lot of people forget <laughs> that your clothes are gonna get dirty and then you don't have a place to put it. So you put it in like a plastic bag or something. It's nice just to have it. So you could, you could use another packing cube, but I think it's more convenient just to be able to open this up, throw some laundry in, close it up, and you're done. Uh, let me actually quickly show you the clothes that I te I'm traveling with, but I'm going to leave behind, things I don't recommend you travel with. Okay, so the first thing that I kind of regret having are jeans. We like jeans because they're versatile, they're you know somewhat comfortable, they kind of work in every situation, they look nice, and they kind of remind you of having a normal life and not being a traveler. But if you think about it, jeans are so heavy, they're so inefficient. These weigh five times as much as my travel pants and they basically do the same thing. The only reason why I have jeans is because I normally live in places for you know three months at a time and I like having kind of a normal life. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna wear jeans, uh, and because I know they're heavy, I'm gonna wear it as my travel pants. So every time I'm on the plane, I'm gonna wear jeans, that way they're not heavy in here. And 
But here's what happens is they end up getting way too hot. They're actually not that comfortable to, to sleep in. You know, if you're on an overnight flight, it is way more comfortable to be in these lightweight kind of stretchy travel pants than they are to be in, in heavy kind of hot jeans. Uh, when I was traveling through like Malaysia to, from Thailand, I was so hot in my jeans. I, I wish I was, you know, I could just take them off and put on some shorts or the travel pants. So I do not recommend you travel with jeans. I'm definitely going to leave these behind the next time uh, either I'm leaving here or I don't know. Uh, that's it's hard because once you once you start liking something, uh, it's hard to get rid of, and that's why you should just not buy anything that you can't just get rid of and throw away without worrying about. So the other things that are kind of like that are the branded T-shirts that you pick up in, in every single place you go to, and it's so tempting that every time you go somewhere you want to buy souvenir, but what happens is it ends up just taking up space and you end up having more stuff. So one nice way to think of it is every time you buy something, leave something behind. So if you have a five t-shirt you know, quota, you get a six shirt, leave one of the old ones behind or something. But, uh, or wear the, the thing that you got while you're in that country and then leave that behind. So things I have is like, things like the Nomad Cruise t-shirt that I got uh, last month on the cruise. I really loved wearing it when I was on the cruise and then like the couple days or weeks after because if you're hanging out with everyone, you're excited. Same thing with the Nomad Summit t-shirts that we have. And But after a few weeks, you know, when I'm traveling and coming out on my own again, I don't really need it. So I'm and unfortunately, even though I like these shirts, I'm going to have to leave them behind because they're not, you know, they're not like travel shirts, right? They're just a t-shirt that reminds you of something. And same thing, I, I bought this really nice... Uh, singlet, this like tank top in Sri Lanka. I really, really love this thing. When I was on the beach in Sri Lanka. So we are in Wadagama, watching the sunset, but what a better way to watch the sunset than do some acrylic. <laughs> when I was surfing, I loved wearing it, but I haven't worn it since because first, it's not, it's a little bit too, uh, cold to be wearing this around and second it's not really you know, like city appropriate to be walking around Kharkiv Ukraine wearing a tank top that says um, Bali surf because it's just kind of out of place and I have friends who walk around like Chiang Mai or like Saigon wearing board shorts flip-flops and uh, surf singlets yeah you can do it you can like not care what people think but at the same time uh, it's not the best like cultural thing to wear number one you know, like you can't go into temples you can't go into a lot of places with your shoulders exposed and it's kind of just like a douchey move to be honest so the opposite of douchey is sometimes i want to dress up and sometimes i want to look kind of nice so uh, i travel i found the perfect travel blazer so this one i actually picked up at uniqlo uh, and it's something that it's super comfortable the material is actually something that uh, doesn't wrinkle. Uh, it's actually comfortable enough to wear on a plane. And I actually thought I would wear this all the time and just have it be like my travel jacket. Uh, so I can I can dress up my t-shirt and uh, shorts here by just wearing this. And it looks like I'm professional now. So I really, really like this. But I actually don't wear it as much as... Um, as often as I thought I would. So I might leave this behind as well. Uh, I think for me, it helps a lot because when I'm presenting on stage, sometimes I have to look a bit more presentable. Sometimes I go to nicer events. So if I wear this with that dress shirt under, uh, you can't really tell that I'm just uh, like traveling and I'm uh, living out of the backpack. This is actually a photo from the formal night, the captain's dinner on the Nomad Cruise. And from you know a, a, a glance, it looks like I'm super dressed up. So. Uh, I like having it, but it's not uh, necessary, but it is kind of a nice to have. So last for clothes wise uh, are shoes. So I in, I normally just travel with one pair of kind of overall good shoes that I can use for everything and a pair of good sandals that I can use for thing, everything as well. So I like to hike, I like to go on the beach, I like to work out, 
I like to you know go to the city and I'll do it on the like walking tour in the city. So I needed something that can kind of work for everything, as a workout shoe, as a beach uh, shoe, as a mountain shoe, and it's hard to find to be honest. Um, the things that have worked best for me are going to be like barefoot minimal minimal kind of shoes because you can hike in them, you can work on them, you can kind of do everything. Um, and I had a pair from Lems that was okay, but they started getting a hole in them after uh, a few months, so I don't can't really recommend them. But now I actually wear the these Lems, uh, the same ones as my workout shoe because here in Ukraine they require you to have a separate pair of shoes for the gym that you walk in with, and I think they do that because most of the year it's snowing and raining and it's. It just creates a mess. Uh, in the U.S., we basically wear our gym shoes out of the house. We get into our car. We drive to the gym. Everything's clean. So then it's not a big deal. And then they, they have people to clean up. But here, they force you to have a second pair. So I actually bought a second pair of shoes. They're just cheap tennis shoes, like uh, sports shoes. Uh, and now I think I'm going to have I have to just keep them. <laughs> so I'm going to wear those because they're a bit heavier. And these are pretty lightweight. So I'm just gonna keep these uh, as part of my travel kit. So now I have two pairs of shoes while traveling and a pair of sandals. So instead of having the normal um, Havianas, I, I really loved the old Luna sandals. Uh, these new ones I don't like very much. They got rid of the elastic back. They used to be so easy because they were as easy to put on as normal flip-flops because you just pull them back. But now, they have this stupid extra tech strap that you have to put on. So I actually, they're actually probably as or more difficult to put on than actual shoes. So I don't wear them very often anymore and I can't recommend them. So if you know of a, a company that are like these barefoot shoes but have that elastic back still, let me know because I'm gonna support them and buy them instead. But these are the Luna Monos and up until they got rid of the tech strap or the elastic back, they were the best. And what I like about them is they're super minimal, they're pretty lightweight, but because they have this design, you can hike in this. I've actually climbed a part of uh, the, the highest mountain in Borneo <laughs> wearing these sandals. So you can you know hike in them, you can run in them, they're actually made for running. Uh, so the, and they're much healthier than you know no, wearing normal sandals because you don't have to keep your toes like that to, to keep them on. So I highly recommend having some kind of nice barefoot sandal. Uh, oh, I almost forgot the last cube because it's black. This is why it's, it's also a good idea not to use black packing cubes even though they look nice. I've actually left a packing cube behind with me before uh, at a hostel. And maybe if it was like bright green or something, I wouldn't have forgotten it. So that's kind of, but I bought those bright green ones because they were the cheapest uh, on Amazon at the time. But packing cubes are a must. Use my link below to buy them. It's it's like a lifesaver. And remember, five of these small ones, uh, it's, it's kind of the perfect size. So in this one is my kind of undergarments and other accessories bag. So I know they sell like merino wool socks. They're for like $15 a piece. But what I do instead is I just have these small kind of no-show socks. I keep... I think I keep seven pairs of me, just so I don't have to do laundry all the time. You can get away with five pairs and just wash these in the sink. The nice thing about these small socks is you can literally just wash in the sink and then they dry super quickly because they're so small and you can have them again for the next day. So that's a kind of a travel hack is instead of doing laundry every single you know four or five days, you can do just like socks and underwear and then keep your shirts and stuff which you can wear twice and then do the big laundry once every two weeks so speaking of underwear uh, i'm a big fan of ex officio this is recommended by tim ferris like a few years ago and it was the best thing that's ever happened to me <laughs> they're like they're pretty expensive they're 20 21 dollars a piece but these this underwear has changed my life it they are antimicrobial so they never smell they dry super quickly uh, and because they're just black I've actually wore these as swim, tr swim trunks uh, especially in like hot tubs and things like that but it's kind of spontaneous so many times and no one has ever noticed that I wasn't wearing 
shorts. They just assumed these were sh- were like just normal shorts because they're you know they're boxers, so they're kind of they're kind of long. And in Europe, most people wear sh- way shorter shorts, anyways. So uh, I wear these you know under my pants you know every single day or under my shorts. And even though my shorts are amphibious shorts, where I could wear them swimming or into the hot tub, but then I have wet shorts. So what I'll do is I'll take the main shorts off. I'll just go in the hot tub with these, uh, and then I'll wring these out to dry, put them in my pocket or in a, in a plastic bag, and I'll wear those shorts without underwear on the way home, and I'm still dry. So I highly, highly recommend these. These are amazing. I'll have a link to them below. Um, they have changed the sizing for some weird reason about a year ago, so now they're normal size fit. So just get whatever normal size you would wear. Uh, but aside from the, uh, that, I, I th- and here's another kind of big hack, I guess, a secret, is you don't have to have five or seven pairs of underwear. Uh, if you get these micro, uh, microbial ones, you can literally get away with three pairs. What you, do, what you do is you wear one, you hang them out to dry for the next day, and you don't even have to wash them. If you just air dry them, they, like, they, uh, they don't smell... It, it dries super quick, so you just alternate them every other like every day, and you don't have to wash them very often. You know, like you can wash them once a week and wear them two or three times, and like they'll never smell. They're really really good. They make merino wool versions of this as well, uh, but these work, in my opinion, just as well, and I'm really a big fan of them. And the last thing is a cap for like hiking or going out. You know, the city. Uh, this one is a Nike. I really like their flyweight ones um, because they are this material that's kind of like breathable, uh, quick dry, and they're just kind of good to you know walk around the city in, go hiking and things like that. So I recommend everyone have a hat so you don't burn your head as well. And unfortunately, I lost mine somehow. But another thing I travel with is a buff. So they make a merino one, but they're also synthetic ones. I really love them for being kind of like a super lightweight scarf if it really gets cold. Also, you can just, you can cover your face with it. You know, if there's like a dust storm or something, you can wear them as a beanie. You can wear them, you know, in so many different ways. So they're so lightweight. Everyone should get one of these buffs. Uh, as soon as I get back summer, I can buy one. I'm going to get a real wool one. Just check it out. But I've always used the synthetic ones and they've been fine. So make sure you get one of those as well. All right, so the next category is random accessories. So these are things that it's going to be a little bit different for everyone, but this is what I travel with. Uh, so first, I travel with reusable water bottle, and this is from Nalgene. I really do like this one. This has this easy open spout. It's the best portable water bottle I've found. Uh, it's also bulky. It takes up space, and you don't really need it. But I feel bad throwing away bottles all the time, so I travel with one. <laughs> but uh, I guess you can also just refill the standard water bottles you get. Um, so that takes up way too much space in my bag, but I have it. Uh, I used to travel with a Kindle until I broke it. So now I just keep one paperback book with me at all times, and then I'll exchange it at, at hostels or travel places or anywhere with the books exchange whenever I'm done with it. And I try to have pretty small books. I used to, I used to read like Shantaram, which is like 900 pages. Um, but having a book like this is actually the same weight as a Kindle. The only thing the Kindle doesn't let you do, well, uh, paperback books don't let you do, is have like 20 books at once. But it's probably better just to read one book at a time anyways. Uh, and things like Lonely Planets, I never buy. I just read them in the country I'm at, you know, whenever I get there. So um, that's my book collection. And what I do now is I listen to mostly podcasts. So you can subscribe to Travel Like a Boss podcast if you're into uh traveling and getting more tips and working online, uh, but also Audible. You know, having audiobooks has really changed my life. It's easier to read. You can be anywhere. You can be on a train and not having it move around and get sick. You can be, you know, on planes. You can be really anywhere and listen to an audiobook. So I'm a big, big fan of them. Uh, if you haven't yet, read Sapiens. It's a great travel book to kind of know more about the world. And, uh, I think my, I have a link, I think, for, for Audible. I can't remember what it is anymore, sorry. Maybe you can find it in the description, but you can get your first month free. And then um, other random stuff. So I have another one of these small Q 
cubes for random things. This is why it's nice to have these cubes. First, it keeps everything super organized. I can literally just throw all the cubes back in and I'm repacked again. But also, it physically limits the size of what you can carry. So it makes you not get too crazy. So I'm a big scuba diver, so I actually travel with a mask and a snorkel. So I have my dive mask and my snorkel. You obviously don't need this, but it's something that I travel with because I used to go scuba diving a lot. You know, uh, I've been diving now probably close to a thousand times. And this is the last piece of kit I have left from my diving days. And this mask just fits me really well. And honestly, I kind of wish I wasn't traveling with it. I might leave it behind actually the next next time I go home. But uh, I like it, you know. And I had I had the snorkel because I was in both Sri Lanka and then in um, Grand Canary where they're snorkeling around the beach, and it's just easier to have a small nice snorkel. But not everyone's gonna need it. I don't recommend it for everyone. And because I like doing underwater videos. I also have a GoPro and the underwater kind of stick that goes along with it, uh, as well as another kind of GoPro stand, um, which honestly I never actually use. I, I bought this GoPro selfie, I mean, um, tripod, thinking I would do like time lapse because I've never used it once. so. This is a reminder not to buy things unless you actually are gonna use it. And I guess after that, we'll get to all the various electronics, which I'll show you in the next section. All right, so last but not least is the tech. And because I'm a digital nomad, I'm someone who works and travels online, I create videos, I create podcasts, I create a lot of online content. I have a lot of tech, way more than most people uh, are probably gonna need or have, but it all fits in this backpack, which then fits in that bag. So it's possible to travel with all this stuff. Uh, so the first thing that you'll notice is the microphone. This is a USB microphone made by ATR. And even though it has a stand and it looks kind of like a big mic, it actually compresses down uh, pretty small. Uh, I also, when I'm in Chiang Mai, I have a mixer and a second one of these microphones. Uh, as actually, I guess, as a, a third as a backup. I have too many mics. Um, but it was just a little bit too heavy to travel with, so I left that in Chiang Mai. And even though the audio quality is better, especially with two-person interviews, to have that mixer, I think for travel reasons, I'm just gonna have two of these instead, and they, they fit into these little cubes pretty well. And uh, one regret I did was I, because I was so tight on room, I only brought one of these with me. And for in-person interviews, as a second microphone, I have this small Samsung Go mic, which is kind of a, a small clip mic and actually sounds pretty good. Uh, it's, a, it's a USB mic, but it doesn't sound as nice as just having two of these and it's a bit more of a pain to set up the two. So I kind of regret not just having two of those because uh, even though, yes, this is much, much smaller, than this. I still have to have an extra cable with it. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe, well, we'll see. But you, most people aren't creating podcasts anyways. And if you are, you're doing it through Skype. So you just need one mic. And I would recommend something like this. So I do carry a power bank with me. But I carry the smallest possible one. This is a mini. This is 3,350 milliamps. Which is only enough for half of a charge on my my phone. The reason why I carry the smallest one possible is I just use it for kind of backups or emergencies. I don't use it to charge my phone all the time because I charge it at home. I charge it at night. I leave the house with it fully charged. I put it in um, battery safe mode right away just so it doesn't die. And I think that as long as you're pretty careful with charging your phone, they last all day now. And most you know planes and places like that have USB sockets we could charge your phone again and if any airline doesn't have a USB uh, charge that is over a 
you know, four hour flight, shame on them. They need to have USB uh, cables. I, I try not to support these airlines. I think it would be ridiculous to have like an overnight flight with no USB uh, charge port. Uh, at, at every single seat. So even like buses and trains have them now so you can charge them anywhere. And actually a good travel hack is to just walk around with uh, your, your your plug charger uh, that goes into the wall. Something like as small as this for Apple. My cable is way too long. This is actually two meters long. So you don't need it to be this long. Uh, at I think it's a really, really nice idea to have one long one. So when you're at home and you want to be able to charge while still using it. But for the second one, I would recommend just getting a shorter, like one, one meter cable uh, to carry around with you. But I, I normally just carry this in my pocket. And if I'm at a cafe or a restaurant, often there's a place just to plug it in. And if not, I can just ask the bartender or something like, hey, can you plug this in behind the, uh, behind the desk? And everyone's always okay with it. So then I just charge my phone wherever I am. Uh, also, what's nice about having a, a USB cable kind of separately with it is if I'm an Uber, I'll ask them if I can charge my phone. I can plug that in. I'll put the phone in airplane mode so it charges quicker and I'm good to go. I've never had an issue where I've ran out of, out of power. Um, so there's no reason to carry a super heavy battery bank because these are really, really heavy even, the, even like the small ones are. Uh, it also lets you charge other things as well, which is why I like it. So other things, random things I carry is I have a nice camera. So it looks like a huge camera and it kind of is. This is a Sony uh, A6300 and it's, but it's a mirrorless. So it's a lighter weight than a traditional DSL camera, but the photo quality is just as good. I've taken some really, really amazing shots with this and I really actually love this camera. And that's why I, I travel with it, even though it does kind of take, it, it does take up, you know, space and it's it's heavier than it needs to be. But it's just a really, really good camera. And finally, this technology of the mirrorless has come out and become as good as a DSLR in, in terms of quality. Also makes really, really great video. Um, that's why I have it as well as this. <laughs> this is a dead cat for for. Uh, to reduce wind noise, but the actual mic is pretty small and it just slides on right here, plugs in right here, and now you have a really, really high quality 4K video camera. But as you can see, I have, I'm recording this on my iPhone and a lav mic instead of using this. And the reason why is it's a pain in the butt to set this up. You, just, you need like a tripod, uh, and then this specific one, you can't see the screen. So you have to like try to guess where it is and it takes forever to, to angle it. And at the end of the day, the quality of phone cameras are so good, especially for video that you don't even need it anymore. So unless you needed like super, super high quality video, you know, and you're producing it for someone else and you're not, you're not doing like a, a selfie, it's not really that needed. So to be honest, I think I'm going to sell this camera even though I really love it, uh, I just don't really have the need for it. Like, I like taking nice photos, but, you know, do I just put it on my Instagram, on my Facebook? It's not really that needed for me, so I'm going to have to say goodbye to this this beautiful thing soon. Save some more weight, but just let you know, it's light enough to travel with, so I've been traveling with it, and you can too. Also allows me to not travel with this tripod either. So instead of having a full-size tripod, I actually been traveling with this kind of smaller uh, tripod, but it's still, <clears throat> all these things kind of add up, right, uh, in space. But a couple things that I do want to continue traveling with, this HDMI to um, lightning converter. This is for my computer, so I can watch movies uh, on my, or on Netflix on TVs. I like staying in Airbnbs that have a flat, flat panel TV, whether it's an LCD or a plasma, usually, you know, like a big TV, because it's comfortable. You know, it's it's one of those things where if you're traveling full time, once in a while, you don't want to go out to the bar. You just want to stay home and watch Game of Thrones or watch Netflix. And by having the ability to be able to hook this up, it makes it really easy. So I actually have an HDMI cable as well. Um, <clears throat> and I have it plugged into the TV right now. 
But aside from that, I actually also have a Chromecast. So here's here's another kind of easy way to be able to watch Netflix on your on these TVs. Is this plugs in HDMI in the back of the screen. And for whatever reason, I also have <laughs> a Fire Stick, uh, mainly because I had this and you have to use your remote from, you have to use your phone as a remote. That's a bit annoying. So I bought the Fire Stick as a, as a test. Uh, this also has a piece that goes in the back as well. And I like the Amazon Fire Stick so much, even just watching Netflix and YouTube, that I'm gonna get rid of the Chromecast. Um, so if anyone needs a Chromecast, let me know. But I honestly, it was kind of weird. I thought that I would never be in a situation where I would live in a place with two TVs, which is weird because in the US, like we, you normally have four TVs per house, which is very strange. But lately, like in Chiang Mai, I was staying in a nice place that had a, a TV in the bedroom and also in uh, the living room. So I actually did use both. But I would recommend just getting one or the other. The Chromecast is lighter because there's no separate remote. But the Fire Stick just works better, it's faster, and it's nice having a remote. So this is kind of one of those creature comforts that I, I personally think it's worth it. Uh, also, by having this HDMI adapter, you can do presentations. So uh, for the Nomad Summit, when we have the slides on screen, uh, we use this. And a lot of times, like the, the place won't even have HDMI. So this one also does like VGA output. It's such an archaic thing. I wish we don't have to you know, travel with this anymore, but um, I just have it because you never know when you're gonna need it or not. Uh, also for presentations, I have a clicker. Uh, most people aren't gonna need this, but it's really, it, it makes a flow of a presentation so much better to be able to click your, your slides instead of walking to the computer. So if you're doing a presentation somewhere and they don't have one, just pick one up. They're, they're not that expensive uh, and they're pretty lightweight, so I travel with one. So aside from that, uh, I have a small USB stick. This is great for storing movies, to exchange files. It's, it's always good just to have one. They're lightweight, they don't cost very much, and they're indestructible pretty much. And I have a pair of Sunnies. These are from Sun God, which I actually really like. I bought these from Nepal, but I ended up wearing them kind of just uh, randomly anyways. And now let me actually show you what's in my backpack. So, even though it's 2019 now, I still have my 2013 MacBook Air, mainly because Apple hasn't come out with a really good dependable laptop since 2013. So I'm holding on to this until they either get rid of the touch bar, update the keypad, the keyboard, uh, or magically there's a, a, something happens. Unfortunately, I. I've, ever since switching to Mac OS, I cannot go back to Windows. It just, it's just such a crappy system. Uh, anyone who's used a Mac for a while knows that even if the computer is overpriced and it's like it's breaking all the time, it's still better than using Windows. So uh, I would just use a Chromebook if I wasn't doing video and audio editing for my podcast. So for most people, I would recommend a Chromebook, but for, for me, I have to have a Mac. So I'm kind of just waiting on it, but it's lightweight, it's 13 inches, so very, very uh, pleased with this. I loved the 2013 MacBook Air. Apple, please make this, but updated. Uh, and if you notice, I have a full setup with me. So I have a Roost, which is a laptop stand. This is the original. I'll link this below as well. And what this allows you to do is instead of me looking down and kind of be hunched over a bit to be on my screen, which is fine for a little bit, but if you are working for many hours, you wanna be able to look straight. So what this allows me to do, it allows me to have my eyes at a normal pace. So it's eye level and it's adjustable as well, all right? Um, but I can't have my arms up here because that's not very good to, come to type with. So I have a USB keyboard. This one's made by Apple. And it actually works really well. And I also have a mouse somewhere as well. So aside from having my laptop kit, I really love these Bose USB 
wire like they're wireless no they're not usb they're noise canceling wireless headphones these are the qc35s and i bought these you know three four years ago and they're still the best on the market sony has come out with a version uh, that basically copied them noise canceling and uh, bluetooth but they're slightly bulkier they're slightly heavier and even though the sony's sound slightly better these sound good enough it's not that big of a difference and uh, I mostly listen to like podcasts or watch movies, so I don't need it to be 100% perfect. Uh, these sound really, really good anyways, so I prefer these. And most importantly, these have a physical dial on off switch, which I love having. So that on its own makes me like these more than the Sony's already. Uh, they're lightweight, they're comfortable, the battery lasts so long, and... Uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend these for all travelers. It can transform a loud, busy cafe or cooking space into something manageable. Plane rides become so much more comfortable. You don't hear the engine roar. You don't hear babies crying as loudly. Everything just becomes much better with, with these on. And they come in a nice case as well. So um, highly, highly recommend these. These are probably my favorite my favorite big Spurs per, per, uh, purchase, they're not cheap. They're 350 euros, uh, also 350 dollars, ironically. Um, but they, they've been worth it, so I'm happy to have them. <sighs> and I think that is it. So that is everything that's in my travel bag. It is insane if you think about how much stuff I have in this one carry-on bag that is close to the... You know, that's not that close to the 10 kilo weight limit, but I've never had a problem with it, but it, it fits into the carry-on size dimensions. So this is how I'm able to travel the world full-time. Uh, I've been traveling now for about 10 years, and I started with giant roller luggage that barely fit in the trunk of cars. And I would have two roller luggages at once, and I've slowly downgraded. It took me so many years, and I'm so happy I finally did it. Because traveling carry-on only frees you up so much. Your life becomes so much easier. You have more fun. You become, you know, you get to be more adventurous. You can move faster. There's less stress. There's less wasted time. It ends up being cheaper. Life is so much better. So I promise once you go carry-on, you're not going to go back. So try it for your next trip. Uh, we watch this video if you need to. I know it's long, but I, I've seen so many, you know, uh, carry-on minimalistic you know, minimalism uh, travel videos, and I like them, but they make everything so seem so easy. And I realize it's because most people aren't actually traveling with that stuff, or they're just doing a short trip. They're like dreaming about what would be in their bag. But this is actually, you know, six months of traveling with just this kit only. And it's also, you know, more than six years of uh, fine tuning of getting down to this kit. So this, I know it works. Uh, I'll probably do another update in a year or two after I've been traveling this longer, but I know uh, what I have right now is going to be, you know, 99% uh, perfect already for me. And I think it's going to work for a lot of you as well. So leave a comment below. Tell me what your next trip is, uh, and what you currently travel with and what you've taken away from this video. Uh, I would, and if, also if you have any other recommendations, because I'm always learning and growing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more updates. Uh, make sure you watch the last video that was the uh, about the bag itself, and share this with your friends. Leave a comment, and I'll see you around somewhere in the world. Bye, guys.